Hello all, in this video I'm going to show you a few fixing options for MFT type tabletops so you can make yourself something akin to this Rui support rail system for keeping your work on but off the bench if you know what I mean. I've seen Andy over at Manor Wood has been using this Rui setup for some time and I always kind of liked the way these rails gave his resin slabs full support keeping them off the actual bench top and protected by the foam rubber strip from any unwanted scrapes. The Rui support rail set has two fairly standard looking 1200mm long 4040 alley profiles with an 8mm slot. Four of their ingenious clamping levers for 20mm dog holes, though a cheaper bolt rather than cam option is available. Plywood strips on top of the profile and a foam rubber non-slip strip topping the ply. This cam kit will set you back £212 before adding any shipping from Germany. If you do a lot of slabs, tabletops or doors and the like, you can probably see the appeal of something like this, or indeed the full lift bench kit. Much as I'd like this at some point, I'm happy with my MFT type workbench and the storage it provides, but I would like another option to the bench cookies for keeping work off the bench when I'm prepping and finishing. My homemade cookies you see here are fine most of the time, but when you're giving something like this frame a rub down or positioning a big slab on them, they can go walkabout. Not the end of the world, but it did occur to me that I have all the bits to hand to do a Rui type setup. I'll show you three different ways of attaching the rail and at the end I'll run through how much each fixing option would cost or save you over the Rui. Now this isn't my first attempt at a Rui hack. Some of you may remember when I did this, a budget version of the MA730 work surface, the original made in partnership by Mafel and Rui. Mine cost me £50 to put together with the original more like 300 I'll link my build of this at the end and below. I'm going to borrow the profiles from it. I didn't need to completely remove all my work surface fixings, but for the purpose of this vid, they're better off removed, I guess. So the first couple of fixing options then. Most importantly, the sliding T-nuts. These ones are M8, which is the largest size you can use given the slot is 8mm. I also have M6 and M5 ones lurking about. They move really nice in the profile slot, as you can see. This is a pair of Groove Adapter Dogs from Bench Dogs UK that came as part of my Guide Rail Square set. They can also be bought in pairs on their own, as can the even cheaper bevel adapter dogs, which will work equally well. The second method is to use an M8 or M6 star knob. As I've got the M8 T-nuts out, I'm using the female star knobs and the M8 threaded bar that come with these linear clamps from Banggood. The Festool original of these also have an M8 male star knob, but I believe the thread will be too short to reach through the bench and engage the T-nut. But star knobs are pretty cheap and readily available. And this is just a demo. Having these clamps is not necessary for the hack. T-nuts on their respective dogs and bars, they can be slid into my hinged profiles. As you can see, leaving the fixing loose, it's easy enough to roughly align before you insert the dogs into the bench holes. These being hinged of course, there's the option while loose to have the profile straight or V layout. then tighten from below. Same deal for the star knob option, just attach the star knobs once the profile is in place. Thinking about it, a piece of threaded bar and a female star knob makes more sense than a male. With a male star knob, you'd end up fumbling around trying to line up the sliding T-nut. With the bar and female, you can just insert the bar first and then screw on the female knob afterwards. With both the first two options tightened down then, on the right side that uses the groove adapter dogs, you can see it doesn't really lock down. It's not going anywhere, but the dogs just lock in place. They don't tighten the fence down to the bench. On the left side, using the star knobs, the fence is solid and tight. For just sitting work on, both of these work just fine. And it's all I want, to be honest. But what if you want it to do more, as in provide a straight edge congruent with the grid pattern holes on the workbench? Well, first, a hinged profile like mine is probably no good. You need a nice straight unbroken piece. Plus, unfortunately, neither of the two options shown already are good enough for that. There's a little play in the T-nut, so fixed underneath, I wouldn't trust the groove or bevel dogs 100%. And with the star knob, there's loads of room for play, given it's only the M8 screw or bar in the 20mm hole. Now you could square before tightening down of course, but the more you have to do for something to work, the less likely you'll use it. There is however, another bench dogs product that can work though, and this is the fence dogs. As the name suggests, these come with their fence profiles. I have their right side fence in my hand here. But like all their set accessories, the fence dogs can be bought on their own. Well, in pairs anyway. There's a couple of things to bear in mind though. First is that from the shoulder, the bit above the bench on the fence dog stands 50mm tall. So for 40mm profile, you'll need at least a 12mm ply layer on top like I have on my profiles for clearance. 
Another thing is the fence dog sets will come with an M6 male star knob and a sliding Tina. This is for the 20mm series profiles and too small for the 40mm series profiles. Not only that, but the supply star knob only leaves 5mm of thread poking through the dogs. This is plenty on a 20mm series profile, but not enough to catch the thread on the T-nuts for a 40mm series profile. To make this work then, I've got a couple of M6 sliding T-nuts and a star knob with 30mm of thread. This is enough to catch, but not too much, so you won't be able to tighten down properly. And there you are. Wrestle them into place, and it's nice and solid. Loosened, they still allow me to use the hinge profiles. As mentioned before though, if a reliably straight edge is as important to you as work support, you need these on an unbroken piece of profile. Now you're going to have to use a bit of imagination here, as this short piece is the only piece of 4040 I have left. Imagine it's a metre long and has been topped with a 12mm ply strip and some foam rubber. And there we go, a solid profile fence in perfect alignment with your grid holes that also functions as a standoff for processing either large rough or finished work. On top of that, this being 4040 profile with an 8mm slot, it will accept the Festool and Bessie guide rail clamp on either side for work holding, and at each end on the top. So to end, let's do some costing then for the three fixing methods that includes two by one metre lengths of 4040 profile. I'll assume most of you will have some 12mm or 18mm ply handy, so I won't include that. The black foam on top of my ply is the self-adhesive acoustic floor and stud tape. About a tenner a roll, so I'll include that in each pricing. Usually 50 mil width this, so we'll need trimming down. You can always source something else for this if you know a better option. So for two 1 meter 40 40 profiles, acoustic tape roll and four sliding T-nuts, which I'll refer to as the basic set, from the best deals I've found from UK suppliers online, you're looking at 48 pound. This amount I'll add to each fixing option. The first fixing option then, four pieces of M8 60mm threaded bar and four female star knobs will cost around £12, including the basic set, this totals at £60. That's £190 saving over the Rui set with the quick cams and £120 saving over the set with the bolt fix version. Second option is the two pair of bevel adapter dogs which set you back about £20, including the basic set for a total of £68, so savings in the ballpark of the first option. Option 3 is perhaps my favourite option, being the most versatile, but is a bit more costly and includes 4 fence dogs and 4 M6 by 30mm star knobs. These would come in at around £66, so with the basic set would total £114. This still offers a significant saving over the Rui set, especially the cam version. Saves nearly 70 quid even over Rui's bolt version, with the added bonus of being quickly removable thanks to the fence dogs. It's a pretty neat alternative. I should say, none of this is to do Ruby down. Like I said at the start, I'd love their kit. Part of their cost is the proprietary engineering for their fixing, which is very clever. But hopefully the three fixing alternatives I've shown make such a system just that bit more accessible for those with more modest budgets available. So if something like this interests you and you want to have a look at the parts needed, I'll link to everything needed for each option below. By all means let me know your thoughts on this Ruby type rail system, or ask any questions in the comments below. And as always, if you've made it this far, Thanks for watching.